Good afternoon, everybody, and welcome back to Markets for Millennials for the weekly market wrap of the week of February 28th through March the 4th. And we'll be looking at a couple of things that we don't normally look at. And the reason why is because um, there's a lot of things happening with the geopolitical situation ongoing in Ukraine. Um, we had a uh, this morning the non-farm payrolls report, which was which came in really hot. Um, so we have the ongoing inflation and economic uh, growth issue in the United States. Um, and there's just a lot of really interesting things going on. So um, in the in the big picture, I want to show you how we have the DXY, which is currently uh, just just strengthening like crazy. Just the dollar index, you see this almost like a small parabolic move to the upside um, over the last week. I mean, if you look at the uh, the weekly chart, you see here that um, this week alone we were over two percent up. Um, and again, on the on the dollar index, that's that's big moves. Um, so, uh, and and not just that, we also broke through um, some pretty critical uh, resistance. If you actually extend this uh, this line, this trend line right here, I don't reflect this, but there are other people on Twitter that have had that line on there for a long time. Um, and that long term trend line comes all the way back multiple years. Um, and so it was a big level and the dollar closed above it yesterday and just careened at the uh, open yesterday um, at the open of the next day's trading hours, um, just careened up. Um, and we were up over a percent just today alone. Um, but then uh, we obviously uh, settled back and we're up um, about 0.8% uh, um, right now. And this is happening at the same time as gold having a magnificent day today. Um, we're closing at the highest level uh, since, let's see, when was the last time we closed at this level? Um, let's see, the last time we closed up here was September 1st of 19, or, I'm sorry, of 2020. Uh, and so, uh, so gold is up, very oddly, um, gold and the dollar rising together, okay? Um, but then also you have yields, which kind of, which they're down on the week, Right, down actually uh, over um, almost 12 percent on the week. Um, we don't have the same. I mean, you don't. You can see it's not just a straight move down. We had a couple of down days, a big up day, and then a couple more down days. Um, so the movement is not exactly the same. Um, but we have yields down, um, and and the question is, what is going on here? So going back to my DXY chart, um, it's interesting to note if you actually. Uh, look at what's happening most of the reason why uh, the DXY is showing strength is because the euro the weakness of the euro so if you actually look more than 50 percent of the DXY is weighted to the euro trade um, to the euro uh, pair with the US dollar um, and on the week uh, this week we're down three percent um, and it, we've been on a downtrend since you know the uh, end of since the beginning of 2021. We've been on a downtrend in, in the Euro US dollar, um, and so you might get the sense that oh the dollar is just strengthening in general. And I actually thought that for a little bit, um, but then what's interesting is if you look at the US dollar Japanese yen pair, um, we're sideways. And in fact, uh, on the week, uh, the US dollar Japanese yen pair is down. Um, and so this isn't just do this isn't dollar strength in in, in the real sense. Um, you actually are seeing uh, between the um, U.S. dollar and the Japanese yen more uh, going into the Japanese yen. Um, and so uh, and then also if you look at uh, the Great British uh, the Great Britain pound um, to the U.S. dollar, if you take a look at that as well, it is also down. So it's not really dollar strength. Uh, in the in the true sense, more as a, as much as it is euro weakness. Okay, so I just want to show you um, by looking at the uh, let's do euro Great Britain pound GBP. Sorry, um, the euro is down uh, against the British pound, um, and then this is where we get into some really crazy stuff. If you look at the euro versus the Australian dollar, right? You can see just a huge downtrend. Um, and then the euro and the New Zealand dollar, and that's also on a huge uh, on a huge down move. Like just in a matter of a couple of weeks, we've taken out all of the gain since November and December of 
uh, and, and coming into 2022 just just gotten destroyed like over the last week this is a almost 5% down candle on the week um, and so that's a really big deal because um, you'd be prone to thinking that with what's going on going back to the DXY chart the fact that gold is bid the way that it is you would think that we would be going into risk off uh, and and then but what's interesting is if you go to the um, Australian uh, dollar oh, that's the wrong chart I'm sorry um, if you go to the Australian dollar um, Japanese yen again like it's strengthening towards um, strengthening towards the Australian dollar if you go to the uh, New Zealand dollar Japanese yen strengthening toward the New Zealand dollar right um, let's go to the uh, other pairs that are typically risk off pairs uh, risk on risk off pairs um, Australian dollar and Swiss franc uh, we are uh, it gaining towards the Australian dollar um, New Zealand dollar uh, Swiss franc and that's also moving to the upside so we're not getting true risk off behavior and so it, it begs the question what's going on how like what's going on here and I think what's happening is you can connect it to the movement on yields. So what's happening right now is because of the geopolitical situation, we're not, it's weird to say it, to me, it doesn't seem like a true risk off move um, in the way that we see uh, like normal risk off into Swiss franc and Japanese yen away from commodity currencies. I suspect that what's happening is uh, the Euro is, um, you know, for the Eurozone, um, the Euro weakness is coming on uh, a lot of fear um, in the market because of uh, the Russia-Ukraine situation, Russia closing off its commodities or potentially shutting off, say, fertilizer and the issue of natural gas and the fear relating to will they shut off natural gas supply to Europe or will they shut off Russian oil to Europe? Um, and uh, and so, like, let's let's if we just really quick, uh, let me let me try to find a European index really quick. Um, if you just look at the uh, um, just the stock index from Europe, the Europe 50, um, that is coming down substantially today, um, having a four percent down day today. Um, on the week, it is down over ten percent alone, um, and over the last month you know, minus 7%, and then the previous month, another 7% down. Um, so we've obviously that got that going on. Um, uh, and then if you look at, uh, actually, let me see here. Um, so uh, so the whole point of that is to show you that what's happening in, uh, that, that, that to me is a reason for the weakness in the euro, the extra weakness in the euro. Um, and then you also look at the Russian ruble just getting destroyed versus the US dollar because of the sanctions. Um, and that's by design, and as and it's really sad because you've, the, obviously the people, the ones who are getting hurt the most are the Russian civilians, and so, um, you know what the U.S. is doing using the U.S. dollar as a weapon um, economically against the Russians is actually going to harm the people, and obviously the you you think the hope is that the people of Russia will put pressure on Putin to stop whatever he's doing. Um, at the same time, you see the uh, Russian stock exchange yesterday dropped over 33%. Today um, had a had a bounce, a 20% bounce, so it's very volatile. Um, but we've had some uh, some just extreme movement in the markets in Russia and in Europe. Um, and so what's happening, I think, is uh, and what I've been seeing a lot and hearing a lot is um, people are uh, rushing to safety, but different uh, kinds of safe. Uh, compared to normal. So like if you were to go back to um, the COVID crisis, let me see if I can get back here uh, quick enough. Um, if you go back to the COVID crisis, we had a, a sell-off. So the dollar sold off along with um, uh, along with everything else at first. And then we had a really quick rise, um, the dollar milkshake theory playing out. Um, and then ever since, oh, after that, you had the, the dollar selling off for you know, almost a whole year before uh, rebounding in 2021. Um, and uh, and so during that time, if you actually go to um, your, uh, let me do uh, New Zealand dollar and uh, Japanese yen, um, that's not an index, sorry. Um, if you go back to that point in 2020, right, you actually see during that same period of time the COVID crash happened, you see 
uh, the move from the New Zealand dollar into the Japanese yen, um, you don't see from the beginning of the COVID crisis until the bottom, you don't see movement towards the uh, New Zealand dollar. Um, and then even going back into 2019, as, uh, as we had trouble in the repo market later in the year, you see a, a really big slide down. Um, so the point being that in crisis, you typically will see moves into those, uh, into those safe haven currencies, but you haven't seen that. What you've been seeing people do is buying dollars, um, particularly versus the euro. Um, so I suspect that what's happening is people in Europe are buying dollars. Um, the euro dollar market is, um, is being bid up. Um, and I think, I'm trying to remember, I think there's a shortage of dollars uh, of the euro dollar uh, in the euro dollar system. Um, uh, so there's not necessarily a shortage of dollars in the United States. There's plenty of liquidity, um, but I think the uh, euro dollar, uh, I think the euro dollar system is where that is uh, becoming a problem. Um, and then people are buying bonds uh, because again, bonds are are typically a, a safer. It's funny, like because obviously there's so, such a debate out there about the safety, relatively speaking, of bonds when you have a negative real yield. Um, but a lot of people are are buying bonds right now. Um, and then obviously a lot of people are buying gold. And so those are the, the safe haven plays that are being um, utilized right now. Um, and, then, uh, and then a lot of people were buying crypto. Um, there was, the crypto story has been really interesting. On Monday, we had, a, uh, we had Bitcoin up almost 18% at one point, and then it ended up coming down to being up 14.5%. But just a huge day. Um, and then we had a little bit of follow through on the uh, on Tuesday on the first um, and then but then the last three days, uh, if I go to um, a three day chart, ah, that's not going to work um, on. The, uh, if I go to the, you know, to the open until uh, right now, we're down 12 percent. So we've given away more than three quarters of um, Monday and Tuesday's gains. Um, in crypto and um, part a lot of this has to come or it must come on the back of um, some question in the uh, United States and in Europe about um, Russia's ability to evade sanctions through the use of cryptocurrencies and I know that that's something that Liz Warren uh, in Jerome Powell's testimony uh, to uh, the Congress this week um, that's something Liz Warren brought up as an issue and, and you know personally I think she's very ignorant um, and I wouldn't, I mean, at, at the very least, uh, crypto is no more corrupt than uh, what people do with the dollars and things like that. So um, I think for a lot of people in Congress, it's about control. Um, but definitely over the last couple of days, um, you've seen, um, among other things, along with the geopolitical situation, you've seen some concerns about um, crypto regulation and things like that. Um, but it, there was a sense that... Um, that there was some momentum in crypto on Monday and Tuesday because of um, because people began to realize that oh the banks can just shut you out from your funds just like what we saw in Canada um, but they can't shut you out if you uh, control your crypto and so I think that that had to had a lot to do with those big moves on those days um, so anyway um, the dollar has been bid um, that's what's going on with with uh, those indices. Um, and if we, if I just take a quick look at the equity markets, um, this doesn't look very good because if you actually look at these candles, these daily candles, um, we've got these green candles coming in a row. Um, like, so we had on Friday we closed up really big, um, but then on Monday we were gapped down, and then we came back up, but we didn't get above our close from the previous day. Uh, sold down, had a good day on. Uh, Wednesday and then have come down ever since and so my my take on this and what's ner what, what makes me a little nervous about this is that we've got this uh, horizontal resistance level um, that we have to deal with um, we're still below the 200 day moving average um, and it looks like we're like after making a lower low here um, it looks like we're rolling over from a lower high and we're about to head lower um, and so um, equity indices are concerning, and that's basically across the board. Um, you can actually see using my trend lines as well, um, and it looks actually it looks even more clean on the Nasdaq. This trend line here, um, just continuing to get rejected and continuing to look like we're going to roll over there. Um, 
uh, similar on the Dow. Dow looks very similar to the S&P. Um, and, uh, and we are also below the 200 day moving average here, just like on the NASDAQ. And actually here, the 200 day moving average is curling down. Um, and that's something that I'm wanting to be aware of as far as momentum. Um, interestingly, the, the Russell, as far as it did make a wick low that was lower um, than what we had at the end of January, but it did not close lower. And I talked about that last week. I thought that was kind of interesting. And even this week, we're not closing lower. We didn't make a higher high, um, but it looks like the Russell is looking to move sideways. And, and to me, that's, that's good. I'm not sure exactly what to think about it. It looks good right now because perhaps in the same way that for most of 2021, we were sideways while the uh, other indices were uh, moving up 10, 20, 30% higher, uh, maybe as the other equity indices are coming down, uh, the Russell will move sideways because the Russell is already close to 20% down uh, based on today's close from its peak. Um, so we are uh, almost 19% um, on today's close from the from the all-time high, uh, which was in November of 2021. Um, okay, uh, going back to gold, um, gold is again marching up and, and you got to wonder, um, you know, is if we get some sort of resolution and i'm not making any predictions but if we get some sort of resolution to the ukraine situation does gold get rejected and, and does it come right back down are we going to have a prairie dog and a fake breakout here um the, this is the last horizontal level that i have at uh 1967 is kind of where i had it um but uh the next level that i have is the old all-time high at uh 20, uh, 2078, um, the peak that we had, uh, which was really just a wick, but back in August of 2020. Um, and so uh, we've just careened above support. We closed above that support today on a really large 1.77% move. Um, so um, this is obviously something you're not going to chase. You should not chase. Um, if you bought uh, kind of, if you followed this channel, you, you know that for a number of weeks now I've been talking about it looks like gold's time is drawing near um, as we started to round uh, more to the upside here so if you didn't take it before now I mean hopefully you're not chasing um, because chasing momentum is the easiest way to get yourself to lose money um, silver uh, interestingly um, and I realized I had to adjust this uh, this horizontal level the horizontal level is sitting at 2575 and uh, we're below that, we're closing below that. So um, silver, we finally did get above our November 2021 swing high. Um, but this level is actually really important. If you look back uh, across the last couple of years, you can definitely see where it has been support and then resistance and then resistance support, 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 resistance. Um, so I'm looking for next week to see if silver can get above its 2575 level. Um, and uh, but again, uh, I'm not I'm not FOMOing after the momentum. Um, I'm waiting to see because the the geopolitical situation is so uncertain. Um, oil, crazy crazy week. I I don't know what else to say about oil. Um, this week in oil, oil was up 25 percent. Um, and it was interesting. Yesterday I saw after oil had gone up above 114 dollars yesterday and then sold back down. People were saying, oh, watch out, oil is gonna come back down and correct. Uh, it could correct 10% or 20% or whatever. Um, and you know, the government, I think, is they're, they're talking a big talk about trying to uh, combat the price of oil, um, talking about releasing from strategic reserves, um, all sorts of different things. Um, but then they're, they're also, at the, at the other side of their mouth, they're talking about trying to ban Russian oil and they're, you know, and then people were talking about how the Iranian deal that has been talked about might also bring more oil onto the market. But there's still so much uncertainty, and I don't think they're going to get ahead of this. And I'm not telling people to buy um, because I don't think you should buy the something that's already had such a huge move. Um, but uh, but also, I mean, I could totally see a situation where gold. I'm sorry, where oil comes all the way up to 130 to 135 or perhaps even up to 150 before all of this is over. Um, but I just don't know. Um, so if you're already in a trade, then obviously you want to start protecting your profit. In fact, 
Um, I would consider, uh, you know, maybe if you have stop losses on oil positions, maybe um, putting stop losses, um, maybe you're around $100 below this uh, resistance level that I have, um, or this support level now that I have. Um, maybe you stick it below the wick of this um, red candle here. Uh, maybe you put it just uh, below kind of this this area, um, which is where you had some uh, resistance established for a little over a week, um, which that level comes in around 95. Um, whatever the case may be, um, if you're already in an oil trade, you start looking to protect some of the profit. Um, because for all we know, I mean, like, just like oil, like, nobody predicted oil would do well i shouldn't say nobody most people didn't think oil could move like this to the upside but also a lot of people didn't think that oil would move like this to the downside and even go negative so um so that is definitely something that uh you want to uh be aware of and so on these types of moves when because these moves are usually pretty unsustainable they don't usually last um it's not to say that it can't go up further but it's definitely something that um, if I were in an oil trade, I would be trying to protect my profits here. Um, uh, the other thing I wanted to uh, touch on is the commodities, and I wanted to just take a look at four commodities, um, and I'll put these on uh, line charts because it's a little bit easier to follow. Um, this is the corn chart. Uh, corn has just taken off. It's been taking off. It almost looks like we have this cup, um, or maybe not. I'm not really sure. Um, it does look like a cup, uh, so we could get a pullback and then take off again, um, but it definitely is going parabolic. Uh, and then um, palladium, uh, Russia is one of the major producers of palladium. It looks like we're going to be, um, we're, it looks like we're at all time highs. Um, and uh, so that has obviously been taking off. Um, wheat, everybody's been watching the wheat chart. Um, you could just see just in the last couple of days, it's just going nuts. Um, if I go to a weekly chart, um, our weekly chart, it's up 40%, um, just insane. Um, so are we gonna get a blow off here? I don't really know, um, but the, the concern with wheat um, is that Ukraine is a big wheat producer. Um, I think they were talking about uh, Hungary uh, cutting off its wheat supply. Um, so it's definitely something to keep an eye on. Um, and then copper uh, also uh, making uh, considerable moves to the upside. Um, so things are, things are getting pretty crazy in the commodity world. Um, and all of that is to say with, with the geopolitical situation, uh, once again, um, things are getting very, uh, crazy out there and obviously prayers and thoughts for, uh, for all the people who are being affected. Um, and just, it, it, we got to all be aware where, wherever you're at in the world, because everything is so globalized and inter interconnected. Um, and COVID did a lot to reveal the supply chain, uh, the way that the supply chain works and um, how, uh, you know, economic sanctions or the uh, cutting off of exports or imports or things like that can have such a huge impact on supply chains. Um, and so uh, definitely watching um, for how this will affect not just the markets, but how it will affect the daily lives of so many people around the world. Um, we're seeing rising energy prices, um, the potential for energy scarcity, um, especially in Europe, um, food crises that right now don't seem like a big deal, but uh, because it's the, it's getting into the growing season um, for a lot of those grains uh, like wheat um, and like corn, um, stuff that could potentially have a huge harmful impact later on this year or perhaps even into the winter of 2022, or I'm sorry, into the fall and winter uh, later this year. Um, so definitely something to keep an eye out for. Um, and my posture is um, I'm trying to stay protected. Um, I, I'm not taking new trades. I'm just protecting trades that I'm already in. Um, and that goes for Forex and that goes for um, any of the commodities uh, or equities, things like that. Um, and that would be my recommendation to you. Um, be careful about taking new trades, um, set your stop losses and, and your risk uh, accordingly um, and wisely, um, and be careful out there. And that's my market update for this week. I hope that uh, you all have a good weekend um, and everybody stay safe out there and I will see you guys next week.